Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Craig and I'm a software developer based in the UK. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the syntax of HTML, or in other words, how it is actually written. We'll also take note of something of a general rule that HTML has in that most HTML elements like paragraphs or headings or links, for example, are made by having two tags wrapping some content. Before we start, if you like the content on the channel, please remember to like, subscribe and comment as it really helps with YouTube's algorithm. Okay, so let's dive in and break this down. I'll start by talking about documents. Newspapers, brochures, shopping catalogues and insurance forms are documents that we come across in everyday life. In each different kind of documents, we will commonly see the use of headings and subheadings, some text and maybe even images. You see in this document that we have a large heading at the top with an introduction following that and this is expanded upon with subheadings for each section which are in turn expanded on with the use of short paragraphs for new topics. The text is separated out and given structure and I'm sure the structure is relatively familiar to you. But why mention any of this in a video about HTML? Well, we know that HTML is used to describe the structure of a web page. If I take this same text that we have here and add it to our HTML in VS Code, what do you think might happen? Will it display in the browser like we had it in our document? Let's give it a go by pasting into the text editor. I'll just space everything out so that we can see it clearly and save and now I'll open in the browser with live server and as you can see we have the same content but it's not formatted the same at all and that's because we haven't communicated the structure of this HTML document to our browser so to format it the same as this document we're going to have to use some HTML tags to mark up our document. These tags give the browser instructions that we're currently lacking, so let's add them. First, we'll add the main heading type to our heading, and this is the H1. I'll be using Emmet shortcuts to create these elements rather than writing both the closing and opening tags manually. If you've seen my Emmet video, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, I'll just be writing the element name and hitting tab or enter. Emmet is an extension built into VS Code that auto-completes or expands out shortcuts that we write into complete sections of code. So here I can write h1, hit tab and Emmet has now created the HTML element for me. I'll use this same process to write the other HTML elements. So the h1 is the main heading type on the page and we'll usually use this to display the title or other emphasized text on the page. Next we'll add an h2 subheading, then two slightly smaller headings we'll make h3 elements. I can cut both out at the same time, make two simultaneous h3s, then paste what I cut out back into the h3s. I do this multi-selection by highlighting one, then highlighting the other by holding command or control at the same time. Then finally, we just have to do exactly the same thing with the paragraphs. I can highlight all seven of these, hit Command or Control plus X, and when you do this, you'll notice that we have seven cursors now, and we can use these to create seven separate paragraph elements just by hitting P and then Tab. And Emmet does the rest for us, which is pretty cool, and it saves us a heck of a lot of time. Then inside each P element, we'll use Command or Control and V to paste in all of the text that we previously cut out. Be careful with this though, the number of selections that you cut must match the number of elements that you paste into. So for example, if I had cut out six selections of text and tried pasting those six selections into seven elements, then all six selections would be pasted into each of those seven elements. We must make sure that the number of selections cut out and the number of elements match. So there you have it. We've taken a simply structured document and reproduced that same structure in the browser using HTML. You don't need to worry too much about what I've done or what these tags mean just yet. We will cover all of this shortly, bit by bit. Also, all of this would normally need to go inside a body section of an HTML boilerplate or structure that includes a head and body. But I'm omitting that for the purposes of this video. We're keeping things as simple as possible at the moment and we'll look at how we make such a structure in the next video. Two things that I do want you to take away is that first we use HTML to structure our content and second, there is something that is a little bit of a pattern here or a general rule in HTML. So 
As you can see, our HTML elements consist of tags that are comprised of characters that live inside angled brackets. An HTML element usually consists of an opening tag and a closing tag with the content inserted between those. The opening tag gives the browser an instruction and the closing tag informs the browser that the instruction has ended. Each tag is made up of angled brackets with the name of the element inside. So we can say that a general rule of HTML is that we have an opening tag and a closing tag and these surround some content that the element is being applied to. Tags then, in a way, act like containers and tell us something about the information that lies between them. So if we have an H1 opening and closing tag with some content in between, we know that the content in between those H1s is going to be displayed in the browser as a heading. We should note that the closing tag is almost the same as the opening tag, but it has one key difference, and that is that we put a forward slash in it. There are some elements, however, just to be extra confusing, that are made up of just one tag, and usually these would be elements that require no inner text content that needs to be wrapped by tags that open and close the element. So these might be images, for example. If I use an Emmet shortcut to create an image element by typing IMG and hitting tab, you see it's made of one tag, which we would call a self-closing tag. And it has these other things inside, and these are called attributes and give us some extra information about the element. In this case, SRC refers to the source of the image, where to get that image file from, essentially. And the alt attribute here provides us some alternative text, which will be displayed if the image cannot be rendered to the page for some reason. So if we say logo for now as the alternative text and refresh, then you'll see that the alt text is displayed as of course we don't currently have an image to link to. But let's not worry about self-closing tags a whole lot right now. I just wanted to show you that these do exist, but we'll get to them later on in much more detail. The HTML elements that we're going to immediately start with in the videos that will follow this one are going to be formatted according to this general rule that we've seen in this video, that we have some content surrounded by two tags, an opening tag and a closing tag. We'll get started on this in the very next video where we're going to make our first very simple and basic web page. But however simple, it still counts. Every journey starts with a single step and this is going to be ours. Okay, so I think we'll stop here. In this video, we looked at the syntax of HTML, how it is actually written, and how HTML has something of a general rule, that generally, but not all of the time, HTML elements are made up of an opening tag and a closing tag that is wrapping some content. These tags instruct the browser how we want our content to be displayed on the page. And in the next video, we're going to talk about building a full HTML structure or skeleton that every web page has. Plus, we'll start using our first HTML elements. Remember to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and join me in the comment section below. Check in with us on social media. We're on all of the main platforms, and the links to everything is below in the description. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.